Hi everyone, welcome back, and this is Bonnie's World Part 2, that's what I'm calling this series, since I'm putting this tutorial series together for my friend Bonnie, who has never played Oxygen Not Included before, so I hope you guys enjoy this. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the duplicate selection process. When you start Oxygen Not Included, if you start with the basic settings and you don't use any mods, you automatically get a selection of three duplicates and I recommend that you start with this because it's a it's a nice rounded number of duplicates uh, gets you going fairly quickly but it's not so many duplicates that you're overwhelmed there is a way to start with just one duplicate and while you might think that's easier because you only have to control one duplicate it really has a lot of additional challenges so I don't recommend it as your startup I recommend that you get used to handling more than one duplicate from the start and that way if you ramp back to one or two duplicates you can see the difference and understand the unique challenges of working with fewer duplicates and you have the opportunity to increase your number of duplicates and see what happens as you add more duplicates to your colony in the very beginning you're going to be given an opportunity to select three duplicates they're going to randomly generate three for you but you're going to be able to re-roll them using these buttons at the top of the window you can also change their name so if you want to give them a name that suits their job you don't have to worry about who they are you just want to worry about what they do or i know some people who play high duplicate number games and they just number them or something yeah that's up to you whatever you want to do is fine I usually just leave them named because I think their names are funny because I put a lot of effort into them and each duplicate name represents a type of duplicate. So if you change the clothes for the Hassan duplicate, all the various Hassans will have the clothes that you've changed them to. And we can talk more about some of the customization options at a later time. But basically what they're going to have, each duplicate is going to have an interest panel underneath their photo and their name. And the interests are going to tell you what they would like to learn. If you have a lot of interests, that's, in my opinion, a good thing. There are there are people who will say, select one interest because, as you can see, if you have only one interest, you get a bigger bonus to start with. There is an argument to be made for that in that your beginning duplicates will be really good at stuff. And this is the only time when you will actually get to choose your duplicate statistics, you can keep re-rolling them until you get what you like. Later on, duplicates are offered through the printing pod and you don't have any control over them. All you can do is say, yes, I want this one, or let it pass and hope for a better duplicate later. In this window, this is where you can decide what you want and make your three duplicates exactly what you want. So if you want your duplicates to be really good at something, then you want a single interest and they'll get a nice big bonus to it. However, the flip side of interests is that whatever is in their interest panel is something they love to learn. And if you teach them things that they love to learn, it reduces their stress. So the more interests they have and the more things that they like to do, the more things you can teach them without them going under stress. So if I took this stinky here with the operating of eight, every time he takes an operating skill point, he gets a morale bonus he's happier because it's something he likes but if i needed him to also learn say doctoring because we need a doctor every time he took doctoring he would take a morale hit because he doesn't like to learn it whereas over here there's joshua which is a new duplicate type by the way i've never seen joshua before um, he has farming tidying and researching so any one of these will give him happiness boost for learning it now some of the things you want to be aware of is that just because you got three interests here, if you want to go with three interests, doesn't mean that these three interests are the best ones to go together. So you want to keep that in mind. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, also, numbers can change radically. So as you can see, operating is up here at plus eight, but Joshua's only got plus five total here. You can get up to a plus 10 or plus 13, I think, in singles and totals so you can watch for that however the higher your numbers go the more likely they're going to have negative traits and to explain how that works we're going to look at this panel right here so this panel is the trait panel this explains what your duplicate is naturally like so this is what they're interested in but this is kind of like what they're born with 
So it's a difference between nature and nurture, more or less. This is their nurture, you know, their environment, what they really want to do. This is how they were born, what they were good at from birth. So in the case of Hassan here, he's really good at super hoop, super duper hard digging. He actually starts with a level three digging skill. And if I'm not mistaken, it gives him, yes, a plus two excavation. So he actually gets a skill bonus boost for this trait, but he doesn't like it. So even though I might want to keep him digging, you know, maybe I want to match his interest to his traits. Now, in this case, there's only three levels of a skill. And since he's already starting with the high third level skill, it doesn't make any difference if he likes it or not, because he'll do it anyways. The interest in a skill only affects when you teach them that skill. If it's something they like, they'll get a morale boost for learning it. And if it's something they don't like, they'll take a morale hit for learning it. And then you have to compensate for that morale hit in other ways, because now they're unhappy that you have made them learn something they don't like. However, once they've got that skill, that morale hit is done with and in the case of Hassan here he got this as a bonus so he never had to take the morale hit so maybe what we want to do is keep this because look he's got a level three digging he can dig out everything that's available including diamond and obsidian and at each level of digging you get different things that your duplicates are able to dig so in the beginning they can only dig out sandstone and softer materials and then when they take level one they might be able to dig out granite and then when they get to level two they can dig out say abyssalite and these are just off the top of my head so don't hold me to these exact materials but you get the idea so in this case you know maybe i want to keep this super duper hard digging because he got it for nothing and it didn't affect his morale negatively to take it even though it doesn't match any of his interests and then he has also got operating and doctoring as interests so when i teach him those things you know he doesn't take a morale hit for doing that however a lot of times when you get a really good trait or a lot of points you also get a bad trait and in this case hassan's bad trait is decreased calories which means he needs to eat more food in order to survive so personally when i look at this i don't care how good the rest of it is if they've got a bad trait that's one of a few different kinds, I'll just scrap the duplicate and try over. So for example, decreased calories is definitely one that I don't want to mess with because I don't want to keep using food. I want to, I want to, my food to last as long as possible. So I don't want him to be consuming more calories than the rest of them. So this duplicate, unfortunately, I would just scrap immediately. Ludite basically decreases machinery, for example. The ones that decrease skills, it's okay. I can let one of my duplicates be bad in a skill because I can always take another duplicate that's better in a skill. So that one, I will usually let ride. Small bladder, kind of iffy. They have to use the restroom more frequently. They will stop what they're doing to run to the restroom. And if you don't let them, they will pee places. It's an inconvenience, but it's not like super inconvenient. And it's not like, say they're destroying your equipment or they're overeating your food. Or for example, if they pass a lot of gas, you will wind up with too much natural gas in your base and not enough oxygen. Or if they're mouth breathing, then they'll breathe too much oxygen and you'll wind up with too much carbon dioxide in your base. So there's certain things that in my mind that I will always say, oh, no, re-roll this duplicate. And that's if they're eating too much, if they're using up too much oxygen in some way. Um, and there's one other. And off the top of my head, I'm not remembering what it is. But the rest of them, I will kind of look at whether or not the good traits are a good trade-off. Then in the bottom here, you've got some personality responses. So stress reaction is what they do if their morale gets so low that they become stressed. Then in the case of this one, he cries. This one also cries. This one vomits. Vomiting isn't great, but you can clean it up. So it's not one of the worst. In my opinion, the worst stress reaction is destructive, and I never take it because they hit 60% and they start breaking your equipment and then you're constantly having to repair your equipment and they don't want to repair your equipment because they're stressed. So your equipment gets worse and worse and it just becomes a downward spiral. You have enough stuff to worry about in the beginning. You don't need to worry about making things harder on yourself. 
Overjoyed response is what they do when they're super happy, and usually the overjoyed response will affect not only the duplicate in question, but the duplicates around them. So, for example, Hassan here has Sparkle Streaker. That means he wanders around and little clouds of sparkles follow him everywhere. And when he does that, he gets a speed boost, but those little clouds of sparkles make everyone around him happy. So the other duplicates will get a morale boost. This one's a sticker bomber. That means he runs around and he puts stickers in all the locations that have poor decor and it improves their decor, which helps everybody's mood. And this one is a balloon artist. So he gives out balloons to other duplicates. And actually, I don't think balloon artist actually helps the duplicate who makes the balloons. I think it only helps the duplicates that they give the balloons to, which makes balloon artist kind of a rare selection. But if you've got a... Um, excuse me, not a rare selection. It makes um, balloon artists kind of, well, I guess it's rare. It's different in that it is one of the few things that does not affect the duplicate who actually has the skill. But if you've got a selection of other happy responses, then this duplicate is going to become happy from sp someone else sparkle streaking or sticker bombing. So maybe you want to give them balloon artists because the balloons can give the other duplicates bonuses to skills. So that's kind of the basic breakdown on the panel. And from here, what you want to do is re-roll until you get these duplicates to what you want for your starting colony. You can also rename your colony here or randomly pick your name and then you're going to embark from here. And what I'm going to do is now that we've discussed this panel, I am going to pause this video and I'm going to make my duplicate selections. And when I come back, we will talk about them.